Hey, welcome back guys. It's time for another project, Barocco project. In this video, I'm gonna show you all how to make your very own simple two band active bass preamp. Okay, so here's our schematic. If I'm honest, putting my name on this is probably pushing the love a little bit because this is a very common topology for this type of two band audio filter. You'll see variations of this circuit in all sorts of hi-fi gear, studio gear, pedals, preamps, etc, etc. It's more or less a cookbook type design really. Uh, with my filter values, you'll get about 13 dB of cut and boost. The bass control is 50 hertz and the treble control is 7 kilohertz, give or take. Down here, we've got the standard battery negative going to the jack ring for power switching. D1 is a reverse polarity protection diode. These resistors form a voltage divider for the reference voltage or bias voltage for the op amps. Uh, the first op amp is the input buffer. R1 is an earth reference for the input coupling cap. Without it, a bypass switch will pop. R8 does much the same job at the output. The input impedance is essentially set by the parallel resistances of R2 and R1. So it's about 700 k ohms. Uh, C2 rolls off very low sub-frequencies in the interests of speaker protection. I've used 50k linear pots for treble and bass and that's because you can fairly easily get a dual, uh, dual concentric or stack pots in that value. Uh, C6 uh, rolls off the, um, the signal above audio spectrum. Moving on, here's my strip board layout. The parts are crammed together and there's a few resistors standing on their ends. I know that makes it a bit fiddly to put together, but like the active blend control from the last video, I'm trying to keep it relatively small so it's easier to install and a bit more versatile. Uh, make sure all of your polarized caps and the diode and the IC itself, of course, are orientated correctly. Also notice there's a little, uh, one of the wire jump is, is actually underneath the IC socket, so make sure you put that in first. And here's the bottom view of the board. I've managed to make all but one of the trace cuts in these two lines, so uh, you'll be able to knock this board up in just a minute or two, really. So I've gathered up all my parts, and I guess now it's time for the inevitable build montage.
Okay, so here's my little preamp. As usual, I used uh, rainbow cable for all the different hookup uh, wires. Uh, it's a great way to get 10 different colours without having to go out and buy 10 spools of different coloured wire. Um, if you run out of colours, you can always put a black stripe on there with a Nico pen and that'll double up your wiring options. If you've only ever wired typical sort of passive guitar wiring, well this stuff's going to be a bit thinner than you're used to, uh, but it works just fine uh, and it's great for pedal builds as well. As usual, I use my favourite uh, soldering jig, which is just a blob of blue tack on a piece of scrap timber. I'm pretty sure I've got one of those uh, alligator clip arm uh, soldering jig things kicking around here somewhere, uh, but honestly I never use it. I, I guess I'm just used to this. So give it a go, I think it works pretty well. Blue tack in general is a very handy thing to have around your guitar bench for guitar wiring. You can uh, hold wires out of the way so you don't brush them with the iron and, and melt the insulation. Uh, you can stick pots on the back of the guitar so you can control the solder properly and get good joints without overheating the part. Uh, I'm sure you'll see me use this in a sec when I go ahead and install my little preamp into Project Barocca. Um, the only thing I would say about Blue Tack is just be very careful if you're working on a vintage instrument with a very oxidized or patinated finish. But of course the same warning goes with masking tape, even low tack masking tape can lift the uh, like a really delicate finish on some vintage instruments, so take care. Now the circuit itself is presented as a standalone onboard bass preamp, but if you remember the previous Project Barocca video I mentioned that I ran a couple of extra wires, one from pin 8 of the op amp and the other from the VREF. That way I can power this uh, circuit from the active blend control board. So in this case, uh, there's really no reason to double up all these power supply components. Uh, so yeah, I didn't. Also in the last video, I talked a little bit about how to fire up a circuit like this for the first time, and also a few troubleshooting tips. Well, I won't bother repeating all that, so if, um, if you need that info, just check out the last couple of minutes of part nine. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and now, then I'd normally just go ahead and install the preamp. Uh, but I thought for the video I might um, hook this up to my USB scope and just see how close the uh, treble and bass controls come to the spice simulation that I did. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got those power supply components put into my breadboard uh, so we can get the voltage reference from that. Right now I've got a 50 hertz sine wave that's uh, something like a volt peak to peak, which is way hotter than you'll ever get out of a typical guitar pickup. But I've set it to 50 hertz because that's where our bass control peaks. You might notice that the input and output are out of phase. If this was a pedal build, that's a bit of a no-no. Uh, effects pedals can find themselves occasionally in parallel and you'd have phase problems in that uh, situation. But for an onboard bass preamp, it's perfectly fine. In fact, it's quite common to uh, have a phase shift through the preamp. If I crank the bass control all the way up at 50 hertz, you can see we're now getting well, about four and a half volts peak to peak. And there's still plenty of headroom, there's no clipping or anything, which is a good sign. This battery actually is quite old, it's about 7.5 volts or thereabouts. So let me check out the treble peak. Okay, so there's seven, seven kilohertz. Let me crank the treble. Same story, we've got about four and a half volts peak to peak and no clipping. So let's do some frequency sweeps. So there we have both our controls set in the middle. We've got more or less a flat frequency response. There's, there's our tiny little bit of bass roll off at 30 hertz. It's just starting to fall off there. Um, let's crank the treble and see what we get. Here's our peak at about 7 kilohertz, 13 dB, so that looks right. Let me try treble cut. Our treble cut's about 7 or 8 kilohertz, just a little bit more cut than boost at 15 dB, but that was to be expected also from the uh, simulation. So let's have a look at the bass control. Okay, so there's our bass boost at right on 50 hertz, 12.5 dB, that looks about right. 
So the base cut looks pretty much the same as our um, spice simulation as well. So I think it's time to get this guy into the base. But first, there's something I forgot to film and even mention in the last video. When you design a board and have it made by a circuit board house, they put a coating over the tracks. Um, this green stuff is the most common, and that's to protect the copper, and that's because copper oxidizes, and fairly rapidly. In fact, even since I've been making this video, this uh, is starting to tarnish a little bit. So if you're using strip board, not just for prototyping, but for something that's um, going to be intended for long-term use, it's a really good idea to give the tracks a coat of uh, this stuff, uh, circuit board lacquer. Um, the first thing you have to do is just clean up any excess flux and stuff with a bit of thinners. Well that seems to work pretty well. I'll put a PDF up on my website with the schematic, the stripboard layout, some wiring diagrams and of course a few tweaks and mods. There'll be a list of capacitors uh, for the treble and bass filters if you want to shift around the response of the controls. Bear in mind of course that these are low Q broad acting filters so shifting their center frequencies is not going to have a radical effect. Um, but I guess if you've got quite uh, dark sounding pickups, like a P-Bass or something, then obviously lowering that treble response will actually give you a bit more cut and boost around that pickup's treble peak. Um, so I guess to button all this up, I just have to use some of this guy, some double-sided tape to fix the board in place, uh, maybe a few cable ties to neaten up the wiring. So give it a go. It is a simple circuit, but it's very effective. And I think if you do a good job on putting it together, use a good op amp IC, decent caps, metal film resistors, honestly, it'll work very well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, give me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. I think in the future, I'll probably come back to these pickups 
and maybe uh, rewind them or tweak them somehow. But at this stage, I'm happy with the electronics. Uh, the bass is playing really well. I think in the next Project Barocca video, I'm finally going to do something about this bright orange paintwork. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Anyone want to buy a slightly used Spectre HasLab Pre?